Shane Taylor was one of the most was one of Britain's most feared and dangerous convicts. Growing up in Peterley, he was involved in a series of brutal stabbings, thefts and assaults, and while in prison, he stabbed two prison officers. The Home Office described him as one of the top six most dangerous prisoners in the penal system. But he served his time. He doesn't involve himself in crime anymore. Why? Well, he says an encounter with God while in prison. Tonight, in an, in an attempt to say sorry to those lives who he's affected during his criminal years, he's invited them to a pub in Peter Lee to say sorry and ask for forgiveness. Here's my exclusive interview with Television First with Shane Taylor. Well, I grew up in Peter Lee in the Royal Arms, and it was, like, really big back then for burgling houses and pinching cars. Yeah. And just got in with all the wrong people, I guess, and they were my pals, and we just went round, burgle houses, pinch cars, joy rides, sometimes pin we were just opportunist thieves. Mm where we'd actually just go out on the mo just go out in the morning, run away from home for days on end and just pinch, burgle and steal whatever we could. Can you remember like the very first crime you committed? Yeah, it was uh, it was with my friend, um, we were in uh, swimming baths and we burgled their phone. We saw all the pound coins and we got the phone and we actually got caught. And I remember we cried our whole eyes out but the man let us go and then we, we were relieved of that and then we just, just stemmed off from there. Just burgle everything we possibly could. Uh, we'd creep houses. Um, if we saw someone's door open, we'd sneak in, and just horrible, really. You know, I, w I didn't think that at the time, but now I'm older, it's a horrible thing to do. Yeah. Well, it started off me getting picked on and bullied. I remember having my first fight where I fought back, and I was getting a bit of attention, and it just stemmed from there. And I just thought to myself, right, from this moment on, nobody's going to pick on me again. It just led to me running around, um, stabbing people, and uh, I think I. I I think I had two charges of attempted murder, where a man was stabbed in the head, and another man got stabbed in Pete Lee in the chest, and, like, you know, could have died, really. Back uh, then, would you have been bothered if you'd killed those two people? Nah, no way. Uh, the Home Office de described me as being on the list of top six most dangerous prisoners in the country, because uh, I went in jail, and I, um, I just refused to let the system tell me what to do. And, uh, and I just went wild. I was just fighting inmates. I remember fighting pris uh, prison officers, just becoming an absolute, I don't know, outlaw, whatever they want to call it. And then I ended up in home house. And the prison officer, back then, I was a big lad. I used to train every day. And I remember um, they wouldn't let me go to the gym. So I, I'll come out myself and um, stab two prison officers. Did you try and kill them? Um, I wouldn't say I would try and kill them, but I, I'd... Um, I wanted a, a cut off, could have hit them, you know, I, I could have because I could have hit them in the wrong place. Uh, but my intention was to show them that I'm the real deal. I'm not an idiot. And you want to mess about with me, then you, let's go. So how long of your life have you spent in prison? All my life, up until I changed. So tell me about the day this changed your life then. The day it changed my life was I, I was in a, 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 another top security prison. And I went on a, um, I ended up by accident going on this course, what they call an alpha course. And it's like the basics of Christianity. The only thing that kept me go on this course was that you got free chocolate, like cake and free biscuits. And so I said, oh, keep my name down because my name wasn't on the list. And that was my intention. Not God, I didn't believe in any God or any Christian stuff. I just was getting out myself and having cake and biscuits. And then one day, they just, the pastor said, look, God just told me to tell you to come here this afternoon and I went and, and when I got there on the afternoon and I got, got in and he prayed and he prayed for me and he said look pray and I just said look at God if, um, uh, if you're real uh, come into my life because uh, I hate who I am and I stopped talking uh, and as I stopped talking I started to feel a bubbly feeling going on in my stomach and it started to raise up um, start to raise up and raise up and the hip got the feeling got to my chest and stopped talking and it just shot up my body and I just burst out uncontrolled with cry, like cried my eyes out and um, the first thing I said to the pastor was um, don't you dare tell anyone I've been crying and he just said I won't and then after that I knew I just knew for a hundred percent that God was real and it's changed my life I, haven't, I don't profess to be perfect, I've had mistakes and there's been struggles, 
But in a whole, my life has gone from one extreme to the other. <laughs> and you're trying to uh, right some wrongs here in Peterley tonight, aren't you? Yeah, well, I want to come back and I want to, first of all, I want to let them know that God's real. If some of them listen, I hope one person it can change a life and hopefully I get to say sorry to some people. Hopefully some victims come and I can say I'm sorry to them and, and I apologise for what I've done. How they take that, the well within their own rights, if they think they don't want to forgive me, they're in their rights and I, I respect that and I understand that. I think you'll agree a fascinating story, one which we'll be telling you the outcome of on tomorrow night's news. In the meantime, though, let us know what you think of that. Get on Twitter and use the hashtag TWNews. Elsewhere, Newcastle City Council are embracing technology and giving